Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Praise Jesus. We serve a living God. Awesome. Powerful. Terrible. Deadly. Said to Mary, Thou shalt have a son, you shall call him Jesus. I, I started ministering. And Mary asked, How can that be? Sin, I know not a man. And I paraphrase the answer of the angel that's the limitation of man. With God, there are no limits. There are no boundaries. It doesn't need all those things. That the power of the highest will rest upon you. And what we have told you will come to pass. And Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. For they said, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And I believe that's for someone here. God is reassuring you, reminding you that with him, those issues you have raised, to him, they are the limitations of men. Before him, they only matter if he includes it in the plan. Where they are not included, for Mary, that was not included. Then it does not matter. And so God will make the impossible possible. That, that statement has been ringing in my spirit from yesterday. It will make the impossible possible in your lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. When they asked about John and I guess they misinterpreted what the Lord was saying. And they said, what about John? The Lord said, if I would he return, he remain till I return in 2,000 years time. It's not an issue. Do you hear me? If I want him to remain for two, he will remain. God will make the impossible that is staring you in the face. He will make it possible by the power of his spirit in the name of Jesus. Second thing that has been ringing in my mind in Acts 2 that told them in Acts 1, they said, Lord, when will the kingdom be restored back to Israel? The Lord said to them, it's not for you to know the times that the Father has kept in his power, but you guys wait, for you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. When? He didn't tell them. The exact date, he didn't, but just wait. He said it won't be long. While being there, time was going. 500 gathered, 380 straight away. The Bible says suddenly. Suddenly. How I many of you noticed it rained? Was there about four or five days ago? Yes. Were you expecting rain? No. Did you see any dark cloud? No. And the Lord said, that's how it's going to be for some. Yes. He said, it will. You know, there was no dark cloud. There was no thunder in the evening for us to know it was going to rain. Suddenly, we had the sound of rain. We knew the rain would come to end that Hamatan season. When it will come, we did not know. We were waiting for the signs. We did not see. Suddenly, it came. Abraham, you are having a son. The next thing he could see, Sarah was wrinkled and old. His organs were dead. God said, it's time. In Matthew 13, 
He says that when your harvest comes, the tars will show up. I guess the tars are to distract. Oh, let me say this in person. Please, God is the one that will keep you from all pestilences, all diseases. He will keep you. But observe all hygienic instructions. All right? You hear me? If they say, wash your hand, wash your hands. So if they say, drink a lot of water, drink a lot of water. They use you, said, you follow the hygienic instructions. But no of a shorty. That doesn't mean you say you are immune. You see somebody with coronavirus, go and touch them. No, that's not what we're saying. But God is one that will keep you. Amen. Keep your family. Amen. Keep your children. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It's getting darker, not so. Yes, it's one pointer. Your redemption is getting nearer. Yeah. So don't be distracted. It's getting darker. But... In your subconscious, it means your hour is nearer. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord will lift you up. Surprise you. Cause his countenance to rise upon you. Favor you before men. Amen. And when men are discussing you, they will send a messenger into their midst who will raise a course on your behalf. Amen. And the Bible says, and what Memucan said, please the king. And the course they will raise on your behalf will please the powers that be. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. It will make a way for you where there is no way. Amen. When man says the door is shut, God will make a way for you in that same place where it is completely locked Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. I said patience is the ability not to waver while waiting on God in the face of contradictory evidences. One of the reasons why a man will be patient is because he knows contradictory evidences are part of the operations by which God has spelled out in the kingdom principle for him to show up on your behalf. Meaning, if God says to Abraham, you're having a son this time next year, his organs must be dead. If they're alive, then there's something wrong. Then it will show up. In Abraham's stain, being fully persuaded, like he told Mary, we're not considering this matter. When we need it, we wake it up. <laughs> When we need reward, we wake it up, don't worry. When we need those cells and they're dead, we, the Bible says God will give it life to the dead. We'll give it life. When we are ready, we'll give it life. It's being dead, it's not relevant. Amen? Amen. And like he told John, if we wish it remain, if we want to use it dead, we still love to use it dead. We can use it dead that no flesh will glue in our presence. And if we wish it comes alive, the way we are ready, we'll command it to live and it will live. Then we'll use it. Either way, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Be steadfast. Be immovable. Don't be swayed by anything you see. Hold on to what God has said. Be fully persuaded that what he has said is faithful and just to bring it to pass. And he will bring it to pass. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. How many of you are aware we're in Lent season? People are just eating and drinking. Eh? We're in Lent season. Praise the Lord. 
It's just that in Colossians, it says some observe a day, some a holiday, some a new moon. And it says others observe all days alike. For every day is of the Lord. For each day is made by the Lord. Some worry about tomorrow. Some live today knowing that because their trust is in the Lord, tomorrow is secure. So they don't consider tomorrow. <laughs> but either way, say, let everyone be persuaded in himself. Though when let season, um, I've not prescribed any fast. Praise the Lord. But be sure that when the Lent is over, I'm going to ask you to fast. Did you hear me? When the Lent is over, be ready to fast. But we're in Lent. Jesus is coming. He is coming. 1985, I was writing and preparing for an exam. And I was staying in a room with somebody. He traveled for the, his own exam. I was writing the exam in that town. While I was preparing, I slept off. It became windy. I don't know whether it's the Lord that made it windy or it's the wind outside. I found myself traveling out of my body into space. And I found myself between the earth, because I was looking at the earth, and I was seeing everybody down. I don't know what was up. It looked like it just went endless. And I was trying to shout from that position, hey, hey, he's coming, he's coming. And I noticed what I saw. I saw tents, people in parties. I saw, I remember I saw swimming pools, people swimming. But the seaside with um, those, what do you call those sky, skateboards, what do you call it? Eh? Soft boards. And I noticed in that high space in the heavens, I was trying to shout to people down, Hey, he's coming. He's co like, it mustn't meet them that way. He's coming. But no one heard me. They were just, if I saw one, they were spraying at a party, obviously, where I saw is Africa. That's not Europe. They well, I know some Africans that go to Europe do that, but it's more prevalent in Africa. And I noticed I was trying to get the person spray. I, I said to myself, I said, no, the, the, um, the musician won't hear me. He's lost trying to get the money. So I'm trying to get that. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And they were not hearing me. And as I looked up, I saw Jesus coming. And he was coming. His hair was, you can't look at that face. No, no, no. He looked angry. His hair was pure white. His throne was massive with every precious stone you can imagine. And I remember I saw his feet. Those holes were big, massive, big, big holes, like bronze. And he clapped. Pa! He just clapped, like the earth thundered when he clapped. Like that. Pa! I was so young. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't even know about the rapture. I'm not even sure I was saved. <laughs> not sure I was saved. I didn't know about the rapture. But the only thing I know in that space, I was trying to shout, nobody heard me. Nobody. One was I said, yeah, don't go there, don't go. Ah! And the person I there I said, oh, no. Each time I was screaming for them not to do something, they did it the more. Somebody was to enter a place, and I was like, no, you must, he mustn't meet you in there. He must not meet you in there. And I said, don't go in no scream from space. They didn't hear. They just went in like that. I said, my goodness. When it clapped, I began to see people will fly and rise 
and balls of fire will drop and people will rise and like balls of fire. And I saw him now, he began to cry and he was crying, he was crying and I looked at his face, our face was worn. Jesus, those eyeballs were like fire. I screamed and I woke up, the window was open and the wind was running into where I was like, oh Jesus, I collapsed on the floor. Just looking at that face, it was scary. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. <laughs> I pray they know what it means to be rapturable. Luke 18. It says, when the Son of Man comes again in glory, shall he find this kind of faith on the earth? So there are things he's looking out for when he's coming. If he does not see that thing on a person, look, somebody can be nice, can be wonderful and miss the rapture. Somebody can be Virtuous. Miss the rapture. Like the elder brother in the house. He said, I never transgressed your commandment once. Yet he missed the blessing of the father. And the prodigal son who squandered the father's resources. Yet met the blessings of the father. It's not a license to do wrong. But it just simply means what the Lord is looking out for is probably not what we are thinking. And we need to know what he's looking out for when he's coming. What are the conditions for you to be raptured? Hey, be rapturable. I've seen people high five rapturable. And many of them are not rapturable. In the parable of the wedding feast, People were invited to the wedding. He says the feast is ready. When they were invited to the wedding and they sat, there was just one thing he was looking out for. The dress they wore. The dress they wore. He said, how come you are dressed this way? Bible said was preaching. He said, throw him out. Throw him out. Just the dress they wore. That was all he was looking out for. May you be found worthy of him. And may you meet his requirement. Now, you may not meet man's requirement, but may you meet the Lord's requirement. In the name of Jesus. The rapture is the catching away of the saints, of Christians only. No other religion will leave. Jesus will leave heaven the right hand side of his father. The only thing we know he has done at that right hand is to stand and sit. Stand and sit. Bible says, and Stephen said, I saw the Lord standing. He stands to receive his generals, to honor them and receive them into the heavenly kingdom. And then he sits again to preside over the affairs of the church. Amen. I've seen some visions, some I cannot relate. Heaven is real. Hell is real. The reward seat is real. Our reward is from both this earth and the world to come. There are mansions truly. Things that I have not seen. Ears I have not heard. That has never entered into the hearts of men. At the first coming, he came as a human being. At the second coming, he will hang in the sky with his angels. And the Bible says the dead in Christ 
will rise first out of the grave. They only use that at funeral services. It's actually not just for funerals. It's for day-to-day living for Christians. It says that we should live every day with that consciousness that the Lord may come any minute, any time. And he keeps sending messages, I'm coming. I'm, this one will come. I was in a trance. I saw the Lord said, I'm coming. And he keeps saying, the church is not ready. All the messages keep saying, they are not ready. So you need to know what to do to be ready. And that's part of my job, to get you ready. It's not by praying and fasting. It will not get you ready. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I read from verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant. I you know one of the things the Lord taught me. He said the same way the rapture is, he has his demand for his coming. He said that's the same way breakthroughs too are, that he has his demand for his coming. The way people can be ready for the rapture is the same way they can be ready for their breakthrough. And the same way they are not ready for the rapture is the same way they are not ready for their breakthrough. I think I shared with you the last dream I had. And the Lord was making me understand the people are not ready for what he wants to do. He said they are not ready. When I look at the life of Joseph, God gave him a dream. Your brothers will bow before you. Your father will bow before you. It will happen one day. Joseph was in prison when he had a dream. And he told the baker, the baker, those were Pharaoh's servant, and they had dreams, and he told them. He said, this is what will happen. And Joseph naturally said, please, when you are released, please, any day you have the opportunity, mention me to Pharaoh. Look, the reason I'm here, I didn't do what they asked me to do. I did. It's all a setup. Is that normal? God said, Joseph, you're not ready. For that, another two years. What did he do wrong? I was stolen from my father's house. Did he lie? No. They wrongly accused me against Potiphar's wife. Was it wrong? No. By making those utterances, God said, Joseph, you're not ready yet. We'll wait two years till you're ready. The interpretation of dreams, was Joseph ready? Yes, two years ago. The handling of the anointing and the blessing, was he ready? No. And God said, until I see everything well, you can't move forward. May he make you ready. In Jesus' name. You know, when doctors attend to a person, a person may look well and say, it's fit to go to the other. And doctors say, no, we can't discharge you. What we're still looking at, we've done another test. The test we show shows that so-so-and-so is number seven. Until it's number five, we can't let you go. But the man is looking well. Say, no, it's not about looking well. There's a particular result we must have before we discharge you. And that's how it is too with God. There's something he must see. If he doesn't see it, he will not, he will not drop the blessing. First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another. 
So he's talking about meeting the Lord in the air, which is the next great event in the calendar of God. Now, there are other events in the calendar of God which involves you personally, part of which are prerequisite for the rapture. I believe you have been blessed by that message, and I know your faith has been built up, and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information or how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.